Let me show you how to convert Adobe Photoshop designs into stunning HTML5 assets. In this video, I'll go over how to upload a layered Photoshop file to Vuest, a web-based AI-powered ad design platform to convert your designs into HTML5 content without any coding necessary. Topics include uploading a layered TIFF file, adding animation, and exporting the HTML5 assets for production. Let's jump in and see how it works. On my screen, I have a digital ad that I built in Photoshop. As you can see in my layers panel, it has multiple layers, logo, small light bulb, large light bulb, main artwork, which is my character down below. I've grouped the button and the learn more text together. It has a subheader and a main header. Now I'd like to export this as a layered TIFF document and then upload it to Vuest so we can add animation and then export the HTML5 package. Let's do that next. I'm on Vuest.com now and the first step is creating a new account. There is an option here to start with a free trial and that will allow you to follow along with this tutorial. I'm going to click login and that will take me directly to the Vuest dashboard. Now to upload that Photoshop file we just went through, click on the three dot menu icon and then choose upload design. Here's the Photoshop document, the layered digital ad.tiff that we just went through. Click it and then click open. You can see that the ad is loading and that will take a few moments to upload to the Vuest platform. And here's our 300 by 600 size ad and the first thing I want to do is rename it. You can see it gives it a generic name, TIFF, parsed, and then a series of random numbers. Let's call this tabulate add dash 300 by 600 just to keep things organized and tidy. It also helps you easily find the ad in the Vuest dashboard. You also have some options on the right hand side under design details, you can set a status. So let's just say I'm still working on this. I'll keep it in progress. We can set a deadline for this ad. So let's just set maybe next month, something like November 20th. And you can see that that is set there. You can also assign the project to a team member or stakeholder. If I click the assigned to drop down, you'll see my name as an option. So now the ad is assigned to me. The status is set to in progress and there's a deadline date applied. Let's go ahead and click edit to view the creative and also add some animation. If you hover over the ad, click edit, and you can see up top here I have two tabs. Currently we're in the design tab, but there's also an animation tab which we'll touch on shortly. I'll click on design, and it's important to know that if you're converting a Photoshop TIFF file, the text is not live, it's treated as an image. So I'm gonna show you how to add live text right here in Vuest. If I double click the text frame on the ad, you'll notice I can't edit the content. So if you didn't want live text, this wouldn't be an issue. However, I'm going to click the text option and in the flyout, you have multiple preset text elements that you can choose from. For this, I'm going to click header and you can see that drops the text right on the creative. Now I'm going to double click on it and I'm just going to type in this same text in here. Manage tasks and we'll adjust the text frame shortly. And projects with ease, period. Now I'm going to click away and then click on it. You can see it has some handles here where we can adjust. Now this is over three lines and I'm going to adjust the depth of that as well. And I'm going to change the size to about 36 might work. And the text, the font that I'm using in the creative is called Poppins. Now, if you don't have Poppins, you can choose a font of your choice. I'm going to set the style to medium, maybe semi bold. And I'll change the text color to white. I'll just drag the color picker to white and then click away. And then you can adjust the text as you see fit in the creative. I think I like where it's positioned so I can delete the original text frame. And now I have live text 
in the ad. I'll reposition the text now and it's just a matter of adjusting the type. One of the things you can do is adjust the line spacing. So if I select all the text, you will see on the right side, there's an option to adjust the line spacing. Currently, it's set to 1.2. I'm going to try setting it at 1, and let's see how that looks. It seems a little too tight, so I'll split the difference and adjust the line spacing to 1.1. That looks much better. Next, let's do the same thing for the subheader. If I click the subheader option, again, that will drop the subheader text frame right on my creative. And I'll change this to Poppins again and set that to Poppins. And the style here, we'll set that to, let's try lights. And again, I'm just typing that same text in. So I'll overwrite the word subheader with the existing messaging from the ad, which says increase your team's workflow and productivity. You can also paste the copy in the frame as a shortcut. Great, click away, click it again and adjust the frame. Again, this is over two lines and this will be, let's make this maybe 20, 20 point works. And then again, I will make this white. Let me delete that first frame there bring in the new live text. You can double click it, select all of it. If I scroll down, now I can change my color to white and then just adjust the text frame accordingly, just like so. So you can see now I have live text in this creative. I do want to add a button to this where we can also add a click URL later on. And to add a button, just click on the buttons icon and choose from one of the styles that are in the presets here. I'm going to choose the first one, get started, and I'll just move it down where my current button is. And if I double click, I can change the text to learn more. And I could set the size of that text. So currently it's 15, I'll make it 20. And I also want to change the font style to Poppins to match my brand in this ad. And I'll leave the style on medium. I'm going to change the text to white by choosing white in the color picker. And then I'll click on the button and I want to change the fill of the color. I have a hex color code that I'll just paste in there. And you can see it matches the deep purple of my current button. Now I can click the original button, delete it, and you can also delete the text because I have a new button here and I can just position it into the center of the ad. And of course you can resize this how you want. So if I want it to be wider, we can do that and then just position it where you want. And there you go. We have our main headline with live text, our subhead with live text and a button with live text as well. Now that we have the design just the way we want it, we can move on to the animation stage. I've gone ahead and clicked on animation and you can see I have a timeline down below where I can add animation. Now if you look at the layers, they're not really in the same order as the Photoshop document and that's okay. You can see I have my background layer, I have my main artwork character, the large light bulb is on the top followed by the small light bulb, I have my logo, main title, subtitle and the button is at the very bottom. Let's start with the main title here. Now the way to add animation is you're going to click in the timeline near the area where you'd like to add a preset. So in this case I can see I have my main title and I want to start this near the beginning of the timeline so I'm just going to click there and you can see I have a window with various preset animations that I can choose from. Up top, I have appearance, accents, and disappearance. We're going to choose appearance and make our way down to other. And in this case, I want light speed left. I'm going to click that and you can see it's added the animation in the timeline. Now, if I click the animation on the right hand side, we can adjust the start at time as well as the duration. 
Now the units that Vust uses is milliseconds. And you can see currently it's starting at 159 milliseconds in the timeline. I'm going to select that and press zero on my keyboard and enter. And you can see that it's been moved to the very beginning. Now I can also move this on my own, but to be more precise, it's better to adjust it on the right side here in this window. So I've set my first animation. If I play that through, you could see that the light speed left animation happens at the beginning of the ad. Good, let's add a second animation to the subheader. Again, just click down below where you want to add the animation. And for this, I'm going to do a flip animation and this will be a flip vertical. And again, because this is starting at the very beginning, I could just click it and drag it to the very beginning of the timeline. Or you can press zero in the start at field to set it at the beginning of the timeline. The duration is 1000 milliseconds, which equates to one second. So now I have the two text animations appearing at the very beginning with the light speed left and the flip vertical. Good, now I can scroll up to the top of the timeline and we're gonna focus on the light bulbs as well as the main artwork character. Now the next three animations are going to start at the one second mark, starting with my main character, the main artwork. I'm going to hover around the one second mark and click. And for this, I wanna choose slide in down. So here it is here, click that. And if I scrub the playhead through the timeline, you'll see that my main artwork is sliding in from the bottom with that animation. Good, I like that. However, I'm going to have to position it where I want because currently it's not really on the one second mark. So again, if I click it and then go to the animation settings here, I'm going to change the start at field to 1000 and the duration will also, will leave that at 1000, one second. So we're, we have this, if I click my play button here, I have my text animation and then the character appears from the bottom of the ad, good. Next, let's add the animation for the large light bulb. Again, click anywhere near the one second frame mark. And for this, I'm going to choose fade in down. I'm going to click fade in down and also set that at 1000 milliseconds with a 1000 millisecond duration. Let's click play and we have our character and our light bulb appearing from the bottom. I'm going to add a second animation to this large light bulb. I'm going to click on the two second frame mark in my timeline. And instead of appearance, I'm going to click on accents. I'm going to scroll down and you can see I have an option here for floating horizontal. I'm gonna click that. I'm going to click on the animation so I can tune the settings. The start at will be 2000. That's the two second frame mark. And the duration will be 7000 for a seven second duration. Good, let's do the same thing for the small light bulb. I'll click at the one second frame mark. And again, for this, we'll have an appearance animation with a fade in up. So the first one was fade in down. I want this to come in from the opposite direction. So fade in up, click it again. The start at will be 1000 and the duration will also be 1000. Let's add a second animation here. Click anywhere near the two second mark and then click on accents, scroll down. And the first animation I had floating horizontal I'm going to choose floating vertical for the small light bulb. Click on it. The start at will be 2000 and the duration will be 7000. And you can see that matches with my first bulb animation. So if I play that back, I'm going to press play. I have my text animations, my light bulbs and my character. And you can see that the light bulbs are floating horizontally and vertically. Now that we have the design and animation all set, 
The cool part is we can now download this as an HTML5 package. Let me show you how this works. In the upper right hand corner, click download. Here you can download the creative as an HTML, which we'll do shortly. Image, such as PNG, JPEG, or TIFF, or you can export an animation as a video or GIF. Let's go ahead and click HTML. And here you have different platforms that you can choose from. For example, if you're working on Google Ads, you can go ahead and click Google Ads and Views will export the creative for Google Ads specifically. You can also click Custom, and this is where you can add your click URL. Now for this tutorial, I'm just going to type in HTTPS colon double forward slash www.google.com. You can add a click pixel if you have one. Optimize banner size, have that selected on. You can also use at two times assets. It's good to have that selected on as well. Once you have these settings, go ahead and click download and Views will download the HTML in a zip file. And let's look at that next. I've downloaded the HTML and I'm going to click the index to view it in a web browser. And you can see that my ad plays out just the way we set it up in Views. If I refresh, you can see that the text animations appear followed by my main character and the light bulbs. And I can click on the button to take me to google.com. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video on how to convert Adobe Photoshop designs into stunning HTML5 assets with Vuest. If you found it helpful, leave a like and don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with all my latest design content. Until next time, take care and keep creating.